Hello and welcome to this short online workshop on managing your time and independent study. My name is Emma Dempsey and I'm one of the learning advisors at the University of Westminster. So the objectives for this session are to provide you with strategies to organise your independent study time, to explore the importance of setting smart targets for your independent study blocks, to explore the Pomodoro technique as a method of managing your concentration, and lastly there will be an opportunity for you to reflect on this session. So why manage your time, particularly at university? Finding and using good time management strategies can really help to reduce your stress so that you can enjoy everything that the university experience has to offer. And of course, managing your time well will help you to achieve your goals and meet your deadlines, which of course is a very important element of academic life at university. So this workshop is all about independent study, so let's look at what independent study actually involves and then we can look at how we can organise our independent study time. So essentially independent study is everything that you do outside of your timetabled classes. So it could be reading to prepare for your lectures, seminars and tutorials, extra reading that you do after your lectures and seminars to add to your notes which is very very important. Coursework will take up a large proportion of your independent study. You might also have homework exercises given to you by your lecturers as well. And lastly, during the exam period, revision will take up quite a lot of your independent study time. So you can see from this slide, actually, there's quite a lot to do within our independent study. So it's really important that you can find a way to organize your independent study time effectively. So we advocate students to put together and create an independent study timetable for the term. So this timetable will last you the term. So you will need to do independent study for each module in addition to attending all your timetable classes. But adding this independent study to your weekly timetable can actually be a really helpful way of giving you a routine for the term and to ensure that you're leaving plenty of time for each module to do independent study. So this slide says an average of six hours each week for each module. However, this is just an average and actually the best thing you can do is to check your module handbook, check each of your module handbooks for the recommended independent study hours for that module. So before you create your timetable, check each of your module handbooks for the recommended guidelines and recommended hours for independent study for that module. So further questions to think about after you've checked the recommended independent study hours for your module are the following. It's really important when you set a timetable for the term, when you set your routine for the term, to be realistic and honest. So how many hours will you realistically be able to do each week for each module? Everyone is in very different circumstances. Some people have more responsibilities than others, so it might not be possible for all students to achieve the recommended independent study hours each week. So be realistic and do what you can. Secondly, when do you work best? Morning, afternoon, evening? When are you at your most energetic and cognitively aware? It might be a question of actually when can you work? You may not have the choice if you have certain responsibilities. But if you do, then think about these questions here. And lastly, will you work in short one hour blocks or longer two, three or even four hour blocks? Remember that if you are taking longer blocks of study, of course you can take breaks within that time. So these are just questions to think about before you put your independent study timetable into practice. So what we have on this slide is a weekly timetable template. Very, very easy to replicate on Word using the table function on Excel and other softwares as well. And you can absolutely personalize this. You can change the hours and have the timetable starting earlier or even later. You can remove the weekend days if you prefer not to do independent study at the weekend or you can keep them in there. It is completely up to you. So let's have a look at an example here. So in this example, we only have the timetabled classes. So we have lectures and seminars for three different modules represented by the three different colors, red, blue, and orange. So in total, this schedule here has 15 timetabled contact hours. 
you may have more, you may have less. So this is just an average again. So we have a lot of blank space around here. We can see lots of empty boxes that we could actually fill with independent study. Of course, if you have other responsibilities, for example, work or family, you may not be able to fill in all these white boxes. And as we said earlier, that's OK. Be realistic and do what you can. So this is an example where independent study has now been added. So feel free to have a look at the slide, pause the slide and have a look at where the independent study has been added and how it's been added. So independent study is represented by IS. So everywhere you see the module number, for example, on Monday morning from 10 to 12, we have BA10 lecture. BA10 is the module. If we look at Monday afternoon between 1 and 3, we have BA10 IS independent study. As long as you can identify what's independent study, you do not need to use IS. You can identify it however you like. So as we can see here, the independent study has been split up around the week and it's also been split up in different lengths of blocks as well. So we have some two hour blocks, some three hour blocks, a couple of one hour blocks. And of course, this will be dependent on your other commitments and your other timetables activities. But if you can, think about it strategically. So when is best to do your independent study? Before the lecture? After a seminar? So it's good to think a little bit strategically and do what you can with that. So you can do this activity now. You can create your independent study timetable now if you would like to. Of course, you can come back to this at the end of the workshop or you can come back to this at any point in the term, at the beginning or even week five or week six or seven, and you can create your study timetable. It is never too late to create an independent study timetable. So if you are going to do it now, I will just run through the instructions with you. So this is a little summary of what we've talked about already. So firstly, add all your timetable classes to your weekly template. Then number two, decide how many hours you are going to do independent study for for each module each week. Number three, decide the days and times you are able to do this study. Then number four, of course, you can split this up throughout the whole week whenever it works best for you. And then number five, think about how you like to work and whether you want to work in shorter blocks or longer blocks. Then finally, add this to your planner. So if you have done the activity now or whenever you do this activity, hopefully you will come out of this with a really strong study schedule for the term. And I really hope that actually having this routine will help to increase your motivation and decrease procrastination. We can be flexible with this timetable. So things will change. Often timetables change as well. Lectures may change. Tutorial times may change. Personal appointments may come up. So if this does happen to you and you have to miss an independent study block, just make sure that you add this back into your timetable for that same week somewhere. OK, because the most important thing about this strategy and having this timetable is that we need to ensure you are still doing the same amount of independent study each week for each module. So take a moment now to reflect and pause the slide if you'd like to. Do you think that creating an independent study timetable might work for you? Why? Why not? And if not, how could you find a way to adapt this and make it work for you? So now at this point, you may have created your timetable. So you might have lots of really well-planned study blocks in your timetable. But now we need to think about actually what specifically are you going to do in each block? So it's really important to give yourself specific tasks to do in each block. And we call these SMART goals. And you may have heard of SMART goals before. We're going to look at some examples very shortly. But firstly, before we do, just to say that if you're feeling tired or unmotivated, it's always good to set yourself much easier tasks. Okay, so don't put anything into your study block 
which is quite cognitively demanding if you're feeling tired. So imagine it's Friday morning and you look at your timetable and you've got a two hour study block for lecture BA10 from 9 to 11. You sit down and you think, right, what am I going to do in this session? And you might spend quite a long time actually thinking about what to do. So one thing that we recommend is to set goals for your blocks because setting goals can dramatically improve motivation and reduce procrastination. So we recommend taking five minutes at the beginning of each study block to set your goals and write them down. And writing them down is really important. Alternatively, you can actually write your goals down the night before and this will save you even more time the next day so that when you come to sit down at your desk, you can simply get started on your goals. If you want to make your list of goals even more effective, you can give each of them a number. So one being the most important goal that you want to achieve in that study block. And then of course, in that block, you can try to tick off as many tasks as you can. But of course, you can transfer over some goals to the next relevant study block for that module. So just to recap, if you are unsure what SMART objectives are, SMART objectives provide specific information about what you will do in the time that you've set aside. Make sure your goals are realistic and achievable in the time you have and that you will know when they've been accomplished as you can tick the tasks off your list when completed, which will mean they are measurable. So let's have a look at some examples of SMART objectives. So on this slide here, we have a student's revision planner. We have one on the left, which says from 10 to 12 revision, 12 to 1 lunch, 1 to 4 p.m. revision. There's not a lot of detail there. So that's going to be quite difficult when you sit down to study to know what to do. And a lot of time can be wasted there. If we look at the one on the right, what do you think about this one? Do you think this planner is smart? Have a look at the goals that the student has written down. And do you think this planner is smart? So feel free to pause the slide here and take your time. So this planner could be considered smart. And if we look at the goals in the planner, I would say they are. So 10 to 12, we have a fixed time. Make revision cards, that's quite a specific activity. And we are working on topic A, again, that's quite specific. So specific, and hopefully that's achievable in the time that they've given. So only you will know if you can get a task done in the time that you've set aside. But sometimes it doesn't quite work out. But this is about learning about how you work. So again, from 1 to 3 p.m., my map's on topic B. This is quite a specific task. And we have a two hour time period to achieve that. So it looks like it's achievable. So this calendar here, this planner on the right hand side would be considered mostly smart, definitely compared to the one on the left. If we look at some more examples here, so imagine we sit down for a three hour study block for the CW35 module and the student has written three different goals here and they've given them a number as well to prioritise them. So have a look at these on the left hand side, these goals. Do you think these goals are smart? So feel free to pause the slide here. So I think these goals can absolutely be considered smart. They are specific, they are measurable because we can tick them off and we can see when they've been completed. My only issue might be the student has set themselves too many goals in the time they have. So it might not be achievable in the three hour time slot. This isn't a huge big deal because of course we can transfer goals over to the next study block. But it's worth thinking about actually, can you get all of these goals done in the time that you set aside? Because you don't want to feel stressed or disappointed if you haven't achieved them. So that's my only one comment I would make about these SMART targets here. So here is an activity that you can do if you would like to. So if you have an independent study block coming up for a particular module, maybe could you write down some SMART goals for that independent study block? So feel free to pause the slide here 
and write some SMART goals down for that study block. So the key learning point really here is that setting goals and writing them down can really improve motivation and reduce procrastination because you don't waste time thinking about what you're going to do and you can tick the goals off your list once you've accomplished them. So finally, coming towards the end of this workshop, something for you to consider during your independent study blocks is how to concentrate and how to train your brain to single task. Because we talk a lot about multitasking, but actually it's really important for our brains to be able to single task as well. So here is a technique called the Pomodoro technique, otherwise known as a tomato timer technique. And this is all about working in short bursts. So the idea behind the Pomodoro technique is that you set your alarm for 25 minutes and you can use the tomato timer link I've put there and that will automatically set the alarm to go off in 25 minutes. You work for 25 minutes, you take a five minute break and you repeat this process. You set it for 25 minutes. Again, you can use the tomato timer online or you can set your alarm to go off on your phone in 25 minutes time. Five minute break. So we keep doing this. After four of these chunks of 25 minutes, you can increase the amount of time in your break. You can actually adapt this technique as well. If you prefer to work for longer periods of time, maybe 45 minutes, of course you can set the alarm on your phone for 45 minutes. So this is a concentration technique. It's worth a try. Um, give it a go and I hope that might work for you. So lastly, something for us to consider, which is actually very important. You don't need to fill up your timetable with independent study. It's really important that you leave breaks in the day. Because if you are tired and you're overworking, tasks will take much longer and the quality of your work will be affected. So always factor time in for recharging in the days that you're working throughout the week. So in summary, create an independent study routine for the term. Create that timetable. Set clear goals for your study blocks. Use the SMART targets guidelines to set those goals. If you're not in a good thinking mood, you're tired or not feeling motivated, do straightforward, easier tasks because actually at least you're doing something and you'll feel good for doing that. And lastly, something we haven't talked about, but just to say there are some fantastic time management and productivity apps out there. If you put into Google time management apps for students, productivity apps for students, lots of good apps will come up. But it's worth investigating and having a look into these to see what might work for you. And lastly, now there's a little bit of time for you to reflect on the strategies that we've looked at in this session. So feel free to pause the slide here and have a think. What was the most useful part of this workshop for you? Are there any strategies that you might try going forward? And lastly, if you need any help with time management or any other academic skill, please do explore our resources. We have lots more videos, we have online guides, we have live workshops and appointments as well. So please do make use of all of our academic learning development resources.